the power of partnership. So why, Pastor Aaron, should I have partnership? I understand you're telling me it's great and it's wonderful and it's deep and it's rooted and it's committed. What do I get out of it? Well, we see it right here in Philippians. First of all, number one, partnership provides strength, thanksgiving, and joy to you. Let's read what he says in Philippians 1, 3 through 5. He says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request for you, uh, for all of you, with joy. Why? Because you've been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the first time you heard it until now. So when you're going through a difficult season in your life, when you are hurting, when you need people, partnership will lift you up, bring you strength, joy, and thanksgiving. It will keep you going. Amen. Number two, partnership provides growth. Ephesians 4 said, instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church, who makes the whole body fit together perfectly. And as each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So we see that that partnership with one another, as we talked about earlier, helps us to grow and to mature. I wouldn't be the minister that I am today if I didn't partner with other ministries first. I can go through the list of men who have made me who I am. In accordance with Christ himself, of course, and the Holy Spirit and the work of the Father. But you have to go to Pastor Wally Hickey. Come on now. You have to go to Pastor Barry Palsy. Right? You have to go to Pastor Reese. You have to go to Pastor John Carter in Syracuse, New York. You have to go to Pastor Mike Donahue and many, many other men that came along in my life and helped me understand what it was to be a minister, how and what it was to walk in the calling of God. I partnered with them. I was committed to what they wanted me to do. Come on now. Anything they wanted done, I would do. Anything. Why? Because I was called to partner with them at that time in my life so that I could grow and mature. The same thing is true for our lives. There are partnerships that you are called to be a part of so that it helps you grow and mature and become the person that you are called to be. The problem with, I'm going to be honest, the problem with our modern day society is that we don't want to commit to those types of relationships much anymore. Let me encourage you. Be humble enough to submit yourself to some of those relationships. Be humble enough to partner with some people that can teach you some things. Amen. No matter what your age is, glory to God. All right, I got, went too long on that. Number three, partnership provides accountability. 2 Timothy 1.13, we all know that Timothy partnered with Paul in much the same relationship that I was just talking about for my ministry. And he, Paul told Timothy, he says, hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me. A pattern shaped by faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Make no mistake that Paul was holding Timothy accountable at all turns in his life, wondering how he was doing, asking him the difficult questions. Partnership provides accountability. Amen. Number four, partnership helps you to release your potential and accomplish your purpose. Jesus demonstrated this in Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it, right? I would too. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. Interesting. So John agreed to baptize him, and after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy, which was the launching of Jesus' earthly ministry. He partnered with John so that his potential could be released and his purpose would be accomplished. If you have a dream in your heart, something that God has called you to do, I can guarantee you you're going to need other people to get it done. Number five, partnership expands your influence. 
Luke 10, verse 1, Jesus showed us this. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places, listen, that he planned to visit. So he partnered with the disciples and sent them out to all the places that he was planning to go. Why? Because he couldn't do it on his own. Oh, come on now. So he partnered with people and multiplied and expanded his influence. Glory to God. Common thieves of fruitful partnership. Number one, the Lone Ranger mentality. Now, even the Lone Ranger had Tonto, so but bear with me. The Lone Ranger mentality, semicolon, pride. What do I mean by the Lone Ranger mentality? That is so big in our culture as Americans. We are very individualistic people, right? My way or the highway. That's a quote that we sometimes love to say, especially to our children. <laughs> But we have this thing within us. Our flesh rises up and wants to begin to tell us that we don't need anybody. That we don't have to belong to a church. That we can just kind of float around on our own and get what we need from the different pieces that are willing to give it to us. Ooh, come on. There is a Lone Ranger mentality within ourselves that we have to fight. We have to come against. You are not called to walk in this life by yourself. You are not called to fulfill the mandate on your life by your lonesome. God will call people alongside you to help carry you, to help support you, to help strengthen you. Don't remove yourself from the place that will provide you the support you so desperately need. The greatest ploy of the enemy is when you begin to struggle as he wants to tempt you to fall out of church. That was the Lord that said that. I'm saying it for your own good. It's the truth. There's a temptation within us that when things begin to get cloudy and hard and we begin to struggle with the things of the flesh, then we either by embarrassment or hurt or pain or whatever it may be, we withdraw from the very place that provides the relationship and the partnership that we so desperately need. And we, on the other hand, as Merlin so beautifully pointed out at men's ministry yesterday, we as a church, as a community, as a people, we need to be looking around for our partners that aren't here. And we need to be calling them, reaching out to them. Because we are called to partner alongside of them. Come on now. That's good preaching. I don't care who you are right there. Number two, another thief of fruitful partnership is selfishness, right? What can I get out of this relationship? It is all about me. That's not partnership. That's selfishness, right? Number three, offense. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, this is a big one. It destroys so many partnerships. Being offended. Taking a hurt and turning it into an irreconcilable difference. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I'll just go ahead and say it. Partnership is messy. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is willing to let you be messy. He is willing to let you mess up. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. That only by his blood are we saved. Thank you, Lord. It is not by our works, it's only by the work of Jesus Christ, because he has solidified his part of the partnership. Glory to God. So on these things we can stand, and the Holy Spirit and the God is willing to work with you and forgive you and move forward with you and take your mess up and turn it into something beautiful. Aren't we thankful that the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, the partnership never got offended because you ticked them off for the last time? Because that could happen tomorrow morning, especially with me. He did it again. That's it. I'm offended at you. I'm not talking to you anymore, Aaron. Are you kidding me? No, but yet... Come on now. Come on now. I'm offended. I'm hurt. They didn't do this for me. They didn't do that for me. 
I'm not going to talk to them anymore. Oh, thank the Lord that we don't get the grace that we give out. Lord, make us better at forgiving and loving one another. Hurts happen. Partnership is messy. Let me just say it. People are going to let you down. They're going to, I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts. So just get the preconceptions out of every relationship because we all enter into new partnerships and say, oh, this one's going to be great. Right? This one's it, man. And yet three weeks down the road, they've done something to hurt us. And because of the past hurts that we have, then we just don't take that anymore. We write that relationship off. We are offended at it. And we begin to miss out on the partnership that God called us to. And so therefore, we're out like the Israelites wandering around in the desert. Wondering why we can't get over into the promised land. Church, we have got to bind together in love. What does Paul say here? I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Let me just say, okay, this is, this is the best way to not get offended. All right, I'm just going to give you the key to not being offended. Don't worry about them. Do what you're supposed to do. And let God deal with them. Now, that doesn't mean you can't talk to somebody about an indifference. That doesn't mean that you can't work through issues. Okay, all of that is good things. But at the end of the day, when you lay your head on the pillow, God's going to ask you about your participation in the partnership, not theirs. He's never going to sit down with you and go, hey, you know what? Did you notice, homeboy? Did you notice how they let you down again today? He ain't going to be talking to you about anybody else's business. And when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, he's not going to bring up that person's name. It's going to be about you and how you handled everything that he gave you to do. So the best practice of not getting offended is just to become resolute and say, I'm going to do what I'm called to do. And if they don't do what they're not called to do, that's their issue. And to freely love them because you understand that we are all broken humans and we're all just trying to make it through. Amen. We're all just being worked and molded on. Just release it. Release it. I'm a, okay, it's so strong on me right now. Some of you in this place, you've got to let go of offense. You've got to do it because it's killing you. It's killing the fruit in your life, the joy in your life, the thankfulness in your life that Paul is so, Paul would have every right to be offended right now. First and foremost, with the Lord. I mean, I might be tempted to. Are you kidding me, God? I planted that church. And here I am sitting in prison, writing a letter, while they're out there growing and enjoying everything. They sent in Epaphroditus. I don't even like Epaphroditus. I barely say his name. Why'd they send that guy? I mean, think about it. A Philippian church, man. They just think everything is great. Yeah, everything would be great for me, too, if I was out of these chains. I could love one another. I mean, that's, there would be so much opportunity for Paul just to turn inward and become crusty and angry and upset and bitter. Because he didn't deserve any of that. He was fighting for the gospel. And listen to what he says. Verse 12, I'm skipping ahead and I'm going forward in a week, but that's all right. Verse 12 says, and I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped me to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence in boldly speaking God's message without fear. Number four, common thieves to fruitful partnership. We're almost done. Praise the Lord. Past hurts projected onto future relationships. Just because somebody hurt you in the past doesn't mean the next person is, right? So quit guarding your heart so badly that you can't open up anymore. Let's move on. Some foundations that we need to operate in for effective partnership. And all of them are right here in this stanza. And you can find them verse after verse. Number one, fruitful partnership requires prayer for one another. Right? Consistent, joyful, thankful prayer for one another. 
Number two, fruitful partnership requires consistent commitment. We've talked about that. Number three, fruitful partnership requires faith. Faith in God, faith in the work that you are called to do, and faith in the partner who is called to do it with you. What does Paul say? And I am certain that God, faith in God, who begun the good work, faith in the work, within you, faith in his partner, will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Now this is so important because in a society that is so connected digitally, we have turned into a society that is cynical, critical, judgmental. I think I've shared this story before, but I had to take a break from listening to sports radio. I know that sounds silly. You're like, well, what's sports radio? Because all they do is criticize everybody. That's their job. I'm not blaming them for doing their job. That is their job. But when you listen to it from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m., every time you're in your car, you're listening to them criticize people, guess what? You start to become a little critical. You read the news today, it's critical of people. We tend to have a bent toward believing the worst about people. I challenge you to have hope in people. Number four, fruitful partnership is from the heart, right? Paul says that you have a special place in my heart. Number five, fruitful partnership requires faithful love. Amen. Number six, fruitful partnership can be messy. We talked about that. And number seven, the most important, in my opinion, is fruitful partnership is built upon your partnership with Christ. That should always be the foundation. Now, why do I say that? Because then you don't need your partner to meet your needs. Christ meets them. And then you can give freely, regardless of what they do to you, regardless of what they say, regardless of how they behave. Jesus Christ is my source. No man, no woman, and trust me, my wife wants me to not be dependent on her to meet my needs because I'm a better husband when he meets my needs. Because then I can love her as Christ loves the church which is a struggle, not because she's terrible, but because I am. She's wonderful. If you've been around her for five minutes, you would know that. Amen. Fruitful partnership is built on your part. Okay, we close with this. Three different types of partnership, and I think it's important for us to understand these things and keep them in perspective. There are three different types of partnership, in my opinion. There's first, lifetime partnerships. People that are called with you to be, be with you for life. Parents, children, spouses, right? Maybe friends. There might be some friends that you've had for life and that you'll see until the day that you breathe your last breath. I don't know. Maybe it's a church. I mean, what, Pastor Wally in Maryland been Orchard Road Christian for 50-plus years? Jeez Louise. 50 years? I'm going to be 90. There are some people that you're called to be with for life and that God will let you know who those people are. The second kind is long-time partners. We have lifetime and then we have long-time partners. Those are people that you are called to come alongside with for a long time. These are some of the most difficult relationships to handle and to manage because you're going to see the best and you're going to see the worst you're going to go through the ups and you're going to go through the downs with each other there's always going to be difficulties and strains in that relationship but you have to know that God has called you to partner with them for life or for a long time that there is an unction on you and when he has called you to do that stay faithful to it no matter how hard it gets amen and the last one is a meantime partner. I've never really understood the meantime partnership until I started to become a church planner. You can look around today 
and 98% of the people that we planted with aren't here anymore. (laughs) It's great news, right? Exactly. It's okay because they were called to be meantime partners for a season to help you get to another season in your life. And the great thing about understanding and perceiving meantime partners is that when they go, you're not hurt. You're not upset. You realize and are thankful for their contribution that they gave, the partnership that you had, and now God is moving them on to do something different. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'll be honest with you, as a young pastor planning a church, I struggled with that. Because I wanted everybody here forever. Nobody can leave because it means they hate me. And that's, I quickly discovered that's not what it means. Some of them I'm still partners with in the gospel. That partnership has morphed and has become a little less intensive. But many of the people that are here I am still in contact with. But it took me some time to understand that, that it wasn't about me personally. It wasn't a rejection of me. It was an ordained thing by the Lord for them to come alongside for a season and to help us get planted and started. Amen. And to help us find some solidarity. And I'm so thankful for all that they have given. I mean, even as we're talking right now, I'm thinking of Mark and Judy Thomas and uh, Tiffany and Jonas and Travis and Whitney and the Smiths. And I mean, I could just, I know I'm, I'm not naming all of them, but these are some of the people that are coming to mind. And I'm so thankful that they were here because they helped us to get to where we are now. But I would be lying to you if I didn't say when they first left, I had trouble being bitter and angry and upset and not understanding why. I didn't want to see any of their posts on Facebook about other churches. I know it sounds silly, but it's the truth. Someone would post something about something that their new pastor said. I'm like, well, I'm better than he is. I'm not going to like that. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? And it was just revealing the ugliness in me over and over and over again. Some of you wonder why I've gotten off of Facebook. Some of it is because of that. I had to, like, release myself and be able to just go, you know what? Yeah. And it has helped me come to a place in life where I'm happy for them. I'm thrilled for them because they're following God. Go follow God. I mean, so whether you're here at Live Song for a long time, whether you're here at Live Song for a lifetime, that would thrill me. Or if you're here for the meantime, we are called to partner with one another. We are called to fellowship and to bring each other along. So that we can say, you know, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. That's beautiful. That we can get to a place where we say, you know what?